in the past less than two months, actually, this is going to be the fourth brand new Ambernic retro emulation handheld that I've taken a look at and done a video on. This is brand new, just coming out. It's got a weird name. The RG35XX. Is the next one going to be the Triple X? I don't know, but they're selling this three different colors, gray, transparent white, transparent purple. It does look like the RG353, uh, you know, V, but I, I have to tell you, I really like this device for a couple reasons. One of the main ones is the price point. This thing is being sold for $50. If you have your expectations in check and there's certain things that you want to be able to play very well, this may be the device for you. I'm hoping to kind of give you an idea of what to expect today in this video. But here is the 35 double X, right? You know, very similar styling to previous handhelds they've put out. They do have these shoulder buttons that some people don't like them, but I actually don't mind them. But not a lot's really going to take advantage of all that on this system. But I, I do still kind of like that, you know, if you want to set those up for certain things. Uh, there is button customization in the menu here. But there you go. We have a, our USB-C for power, and you can use that for OTG and plug-in controllers or like 2.4 gigahertz controllers with a dongle or just go wired, that kind of thing. Headphone jack. Then on this side, we have two SD card slots, micro SD card slots. The base one comes with 64 gigs, it looks like. And let's see what else. We got a reset button, power button up top. We do have HDMI, so that's where that, you know, plugging in OTG cable comes in handy. You plug this into a TV, use it as a little tiny console, and have, you know, wired controllers and not have to use this type of thing, right? So there's that little LED indicators in the top, volume on the side. So let's go ahead and get this thing powered on and check it out. So while that is booting up, let's see what else is in the box. So we get a little... Uh, it took no time at all to boot up, really. It just showed the Ambernic screen a few seconds later. We are in it. But real quick, just get this little, like, one-page insert that explains everything. And really, there is not a lot to explain. This is a very simple, you know, build that they have here. The way they put it together with their own operating system. It's not open. There's, like, no custom stuff at the moment. They haven't made anything open source from what I understand. Tempered glass screen protector, if you want to pop that on there. Some wipey wipe action, and probably in here is just a micro USB cable. You, or not micro USB, USB-C cable, yeah. So this is pretty much it. Game rooms, favorites, history, search, and settings. And you can customize, you know, how things look here. I've kind of changed a few things, but in settings, uh, you can take a look at the battery, see what, you know, our capacity is at. If we're charging, all that good stuff. Shut down, date and time, IO test. You can test all the buttons type of thing. See how that all works. Uh, theme setting. So you can change the icons. I think stock, it was this one. But I changed it. You know, whatever you're... I don't know why they got Angry Birds. It's kind of stupid, but all right. But yeah, a few different options there. Background, you have different options for the background as well. Language, schedule power off. Okay, backlight time. You could like have it where it turns off. Brightness, I did turn it down one. And I'll explain in a second. You could customize the buttons for if you plug something in or change what all these buttons do. So. That, that comes in handy. Very simple, basic stuff. They kept this very clean. Very clean. Clear core association, so you'd have to redo that, but everything should be good here. If you want to play some games, you just simply click A on the uh, game room and select which console you want to take a look at. So I know I haven't mentioned specs yet. This is a, uh, the screen size, the 3.5 inch IPS screen at 640 by 480 resolution. This thing is uh, powered by a quad-core ARM Cortex-A9 CPU. The GPU is a quad-core Power VR SGX 54MP. We got DDR3 256 megabytes of RAM, 2100 milliamp hour battery. Get, you know, some decent playtime on this thing. But yeah, this is pretty much it. You go through, 
find what console you want to play, and that's it. We're not getting crazy stuff on here. We're not getting Dreamcast, Naomi, uh, you know, there's no PS2, there's no GameCube. This thing's not powerful enough for, you know, newer stuff, you know. You're, you're looking good here with the 8, 16-bit up the PS1 and tons of arcade games. So PS1, we have a handful of things, and I like this build. It's very simple. It's clean. It's basic. There's no fluff. There's no, like millions of ROMs listed over and over again. So that's another reason why I kind of like this. But let's boot into a game real quick, see the performance. PS1, if PS1 runs fine, everything else that's already on here is going to run fine. Oh, shit. Now look at that screen. I mean, the screen, it, it looks really good in my opinion. I do have a, a small issue with it, and I'll try to explain in a second, which is why I put the brightness down slightly. But yeah, this game is running buttery smooth. And it's also, I got rumble on, so this game supports rumble. And it is vibrating a little bit. It is vibrating just slightly. I never understand what that is, okay. But if you press the menu button, you go to this screen, exit game, save game, uh, video display effect. You can do dot matrix, scan lines, all that kind of stuff. Brightness you could change, change the BIOS for PlayStation and enable vibration. So there was PS1, runs great. Vertical arcade, you got a bunch of stuff. CPS, we've got, what, tons of, uh, you know, CPS games. Looks fairly complete, I think. Let's check out Third Strike. Sometimes this game stutters on some devices. The D-pad feels great. I can't really complain about the D-pad. I could do my Hadoukens, my Dragon Punches, no problem. You know, the smaller form factor, you know, is not going to be for everybody with that vertical orientation. But I, I feel like it works great. But as you see, this game is performing fine. Now, the face buttons are a little small. Um, you know, my thumb can cover the whole thing, but it, it works fine. We got Neo Geo on here. And the one thing I am surprised is I'm not seeing like all the different, um, hacks included here. But as expected, Neo Geo here is running great. The, I mean, the screen looks wonderful, but I do have to show you, I, I noticed some light bleed on the bottom and like kind of on the corner, one of the corners. Uh, if I had the brightness all the way up, I could notice it on like black screens or darker screens or even just the uh, theme on the main screen. But uh, in games, I didn't notice it. When I turned the brightness down one notch, I don't really see it as bad anymore. Um, I don't know if every unit's like that. Sometimes just like maybe this one of the screws is a little tight, and that, that'll happen. It'll put some pressure. But, yeah, I, I kind of like squeezed it and stuff, and I kind of think I worked it out anyway. But I don't see it anymore. Game Boy Advance? Let's see what game, how Game Boy Advance looks on here. So yeah, this, this screen really looks good um, on these games. Game Boy Advance is looking awesome. But yeah, I mean, let me get out of there. The, I, I really like this handheld just because of the simplicity factor. Like, a lot of people always ask, like, oh, I want a device to give to my kids that could play, like, a lot of these different types of games, right? And this is one, for the price, it's not bad. And it's, it, it's like hard to mess things up like you're not really a kid's not going to go in here and jack a bunch of stuff up you go into the settings there's really nothing here you can do other than some basic stuff if a kid goes in here and changes the button customization you know they customize the buttons messes something up you just restore it go to the default that's it it's very simple very clean very basic and i like that you know oh we do got some hacks mixed in here but overall this does seem Fairly 
you know, a fairly clean build uh, for what they're doing here. And yeah, I mean, for the price, this is one I definitely think people uh, would be fine with. Looks like we got European uh, ROMs for a lot of stuff here, but should be able to just add or, you know, subtract, change out if you want. At least for NES, that's what it looked like. A lot of a uh, European version, like the Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles. But yeah, really cool little device, man. I don't know what else to say. As long as you're cool with like, hey, just 16-bit, 18-bit, some handheld stuff, uh, you know, no Dreamcast. You're not getting none of that. You're just playing all these classics. Then yeah, I think you'll be fine. Do they got Game Boy? Yes, they do. So there you go. That's what Game Boy looks like. Is there options in here to change? No, just the uh, display effect. But yeah, if you want something simple that isn't gonna get jacked around with easily, just has the games, you could just play them. Yeah. But yeah, this this little device is really, uh, it's it's not crazy powerful, but just what was shipped here, how everything's set up, the simplicity behind it. I like that, man. I like that. Let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching. Bye.